All right, guys, we're continuing toxicology, and we're actually getting to the part about stings and 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 bites. And uh, again, this one's kind of a this is one I actually got a little bit of familiarity with uh, because again, snake bites. Uh, don't ask me why. Uh, I, I know why because when I was coming through paramedic school, our medical director at the time was actually. Um, he he was probably one of the biggest snake bite experts, so therefore we had to know our snake bites, okay? And so let's go over some of the things that can inject poisons into you and how to treat them. Uh, again, if possible, identify the insect, reptile, animal that caused the injury as long as you can do it safely. Do not, I repeat, do not bring the freaking snake in a bag to the hospital. That is the most, don't do it. Leave it there. Take a picture. Uh, don't bring it with you. If the if you handed a pillowcase with the snake in it, the snake can bite you through the pillowcase. Newsflash. Oh, it'll be safe. Uh, no, it won't. Okay. Um, uh, so again, guys, ladies and gentlemen, again, we don't put it with the patient. We don't put it in the back of the truck. We don't take it to the hospital. Okay. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Okay? Again, uh, in the, again, watch for anaphylactic reactions. Um, one of the cases that my paramedic instructor told me about was they're pumping this guy full of antivenom. And they, they can't get him to reverse. And he's you know pale, cool, sweaty. He's got rashes everywhere. And finally, somebody said, hey, why don't we just give him 50 of Benadryl and, uh, and, and 0.3 of Epi. And they did that. And the guy almost instantly got better. So, yes, you can be allergic to whatever bit you, okay? So, again, but the biggest thing is, is let's let's figure out what it is that um, that stung them and, again, or, or bit them, and that can help us with our treatment modalities. Uh, the hymenoeptera, uh, hymenoeptera subclass is the guys that usually bite us and sting us, and usually a honeybee will leave stingers, and wasp yellow jackets, fire ants, all these guys, uh, and they usually um, are going to sting you until you remove them from contact, okay? The the, the honeybee is going to hit you and then leave. The, the rest of them um, are going to are, are going to keep hitting you, okay? So, again, it, it, the biggest thing is you get the local redness, swelling. Uh, you might skin's whelps because of that. It's when they have the anaphylactic reaction where they start having tachycardia, their, their blood vessels dilate. The laryngeal edema, the facial edema, uh, again, and then you get the airway swelling. So again, wash the area, gently remove the stinger. Don't use, don't use a pair of tweezers. You scrape them off. Uh, you don't want to use a pair of tweezers because that pushes all the venom into the. And then a cool compress to the injection sites are, are a, a good way for your your for your bee stings. Uh, and again, the. By the way, they've got some other strains of those bees or killer bees again, and they viciously attack. Yes, the and they have been moving up from the southern continents up into North America. Uh, immobilize them with a with a wetting agent. Uh, uh, your your a fog no, a fog stream works really good. Fog stream with a little bit of foam in it works even better. Uh, so again, this will the, will not them allow them. Uh, uh, your turnout gear can actually provide a little bit of protection, uh, again, assuming that you've got a, a, a bee veil on those, okay? Um, and you definitely would want to, uh, kind of a funny story, I had I had a bees, uh, a subterranean bees nest, I actually ran over it with my, um, with my lawnmower, and so I, you know, tried to get the lawnmower back where I promptly got tore up a second time and actually how I got rid of the nest was as I actually put my turnout gear on my air mask on uh went and uh, filled their little beehive full of gasoline and lit it on fire uh and all I could think of at the time was is you know it, but you should have seen them sting in my turnout gear it was it was pretty funny your brown recluse uh again these guys they they, they like dark dry locations uh they got usually a violin shape on their back okay that's kind of the the giveaway to the brown recluse okay uh but the problem is is when this guy bites you he actually leaves a a um 
the bite is usually actually painless, but it's the infection and the white ring that forms around after the bite. And then the next eight hours, that's when you start getting tissue necrosis from it. So this would be an example, and I will tell you, you get a lot of cellulitis from this. Uh, I've been bitten, bitten, bitten by a couple of them, and uh, again, usually they have to debreed uh, the, the necrosis from that. Now, your Black Widow spider bites, these guys, uh, again, that's got the, the telltale hourglass sign mark. Uh, uh, for these guys, and there's an example of the of the br black, or actually they, there are some brown widows out there as well, but they've got that distinct hourglass shape. The problem with these guys' is toxin is they start to cause muscle spasms, uh, and actually calcium gluconate is actually what will help reduce those, oh, sorry, going the wrong direction. But the calcium gluconate is actually the antivenom. It will help decrease it. Uh, Treat your seizures, treat your vomiting from that, and there is actually antivenom available for the black widow spider bite. Again, it's usually uh, scorpion stings. Again, uh, these guys usually like to move at night. Uh, again, they got a venom sack on the tail, and uh, the example here would be right in this general area. There is your venom sack, and then when it goes to strike, it will pop out. And uh, again, usually the smaller the scorpion, actually the worse, but the, the, the more top potent the toxin, the problem with that is is that the bigger ones have more toxin to give you. Okay, uh, they usually progresses the you get numbness, stir speech. It's a neurotoxin. Okay, and these guys uh, again vomiting seizures. It can't happen. Now the little ones in Florida again is they're gonna hurt pretty bad, but they're usually not fatal. But usually like you were talking about your desert. Your desert dwellers, those guys can actually cause the cause a lot of problems. And again, uh, uh, wash it, uh, uh, and again, um, put a constricting band above the wound site, no tighter than the watch band, uh, again, to prevent lymphatic flow. Uh, don't use your analgesics here, and again, there is antivenom available. Uh, and I will tell you, by the way, in the state of Florida, when we're talking about antivenoms, uh, yeah, actually, the Dr. Abo, who I talked about a little bit earlier, he actually has a full complement of antivenoms uh, available that he can transfer all over the state. Uh, and so he's the coordinator, actually, for the North Region. And so he will actually respond to these when, when you know exactly what it is. Um, now, snake bites. Uh, the the, com the common ones are your, your cotton mouse, rattlesnakes, copperheads, or your pit vipers. And then your other ones are again, and these are an example of a cop. Uh, this is a cotton mouth. Uh, this little booger is mean, nasty, evil. Uh, yes, he likes to. He loves our rivers, uh, especially around the Oklahoma River. I can tell you, yeah, there's a, a, a you see a lot of them on the uh, Rainbow River as well. Uh, they will chase you. Uh, these guys, rattlesnakes, will usually back off unless they're defending something. And there's a good example of an eastern diamondback rattlesnake. Uh, but if you notice the heads on these guys, okay, notice that all of these again, these are your venom sacs. But notice they usually have the triangular head. The other thing I want you to notice on this is that they've got the cat-like eye, the cat-like pupil. Okay, so again, that's how we usually tell our pit vipers they have the elliptical uh, uh, pupil, and only rattlesnakes will rattle with the end on their tail. So your cotton mouth does not have or your copperheads, excuse me, do not have rattlers on them, okay? Now, again, by the way, there's there's different type of rattlesnakes, by the way. There's your your eastern diamondback. There's a western diamondback. Uh, there's the pygmy rattlesnake. They are kind of prevalent here in Florida. And the pygmies, uh, they do have some pretty toxic venom. Um, we've actually lost one of our... Um, our or fire marshal up in Putnam County uh, due to a rattles to a pygmy rattlesnake bike. Okay, so again, there they have a resp. It, it the the snake venom here is the for the rattlesnakes. We'll talk about it in just a second, but they're they're more of a coagulate the blood type, and they affect the respiratory tract. Where the, the your your coral snakes is again these guys are a distant relative of the cobra, and they have small fangs, more like hollow teeth, really. But they're 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 they have a neurotoxin, and these guys are extremely dangerous. If you get the toxin in you, the good news is is that the toxin. But but by the way, the the coral snake by the way does has a round pupil. There's no pits, but it's a and the pattern is the red touches yellow. 
kills the fellow red touches black and the venom lacks um the other thing is is that the king snake goes uh, they 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 mimic that color pattern but they have red touch black the other thing with the coral snake is is the coral snake has a black head so if you see the black hood of death yep that would mean it's a coral snake and you probably shouldn't mess with it okay um, so again, and, and by the way, usually these guys will run from you unless provoked. If you're provoking them, they can get a little bit nasty. Okay. Now, uh, again, your pit viper venoms, they usually have, again, a blood coagulation. It destroys the proteins in there. Um, and, uh, the one guy that I have had that died from a, a pit viper bite, um, or let me say the one that actively died in front of me, uh, went from being okay talking to me to puking to unconscious between the distance of Silver Springs and Highway 40 in Pine. Okay, so uh, I will tell you that it can happen that quick, especially if it gets into there. Uh, it, it can happen within 30 minutes. Uh, usually the deaths are within 6 to 30 hours. It causes tissue necrosis, and especially at the site of the blight, and you get lots of swelling there. Uh, that one that I was talking about that was coming from Silver Springs, that, that gentleman actually took a direct hit to his vein in the top part of his thumb. Um, and again, uh, usually, by the way, 90% are within the first 48 hours. If you make it past the 48, usually you're going to be okay. Um, so again, what we're looking for, swelling around the site, fang marks. Two distinct, doesn't have to be two holes, but usually two small holes is our giveaway there. Um, like I said, by the way, some of them break their fangs, so they might only have the one. Uh, one other little side note, guys, is... If a pit viper does hit you, one out of four are usually dry bites. Remember I said that the snake really doesn't want to, he, he unless it's a cotton mouth, cotton mouths are mean, they'll they'll hit you. But the eastern diamondbacks, they're, they're, they strike out usually when they're cornered or you're somewhere where you're not supposed to be, okay? And, and but they'll do it and they'll hit, and, and the way that they project is again, They'll open their mouths, the fangs will come out, and they inject their venom into the patient. But about one out of every four, 25% of these are actually dry bites, okay? So don't go pumping them full of antivenom right off the bat because, again, you might not have to, okay? So the biggest thing is, is you're, you're nausea, vomiting, your diarrhea. Uh, you're, they're going to get tachycardic. They're going to get hypotensive. Uh, you'll, late signs are your bleedings and your ecchymosis. Uh, those are your 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 really big and late signs. Again, uh, they're going to slow the respiratory rate and then numbness and tingling around the face and the head. Okay, um, so remember again that 25%. Uh, make sure that you wash off the 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 cuts. Uh, um, the old routine of making an X and sucking it out. Uh, doesn't really work, okay? Uh, I know that they say that, you know, oh, if you're out, you know, again, if I'm out in the woods and I'm an hour and a half away from the, from, from civilization, uh, it might have some merit. Uh, this, no, it doesn't. You know, just, just don't begin, you know, random suctioning. Uh, again, a good washing off of the area is probably your best bet there. Uh, cleaning it out in, the, in a good washing is probably going to be your best. Because remember when I said, these guys, uh, uh, um, they inject it into you, okay? And the, your primary goal, by the way, is slow absorption of the venom. Uh, tourniqueting the, the patient, putting a, a stopping the, putting a constricting band on. Uh, there's some pro and con to that. Uh, keep the wound at the level of the heart. Um, keep the uh, the limb immobilized. Uh, uh, again, uh, constricting bands, uh, they really don't work because usually it's already inside the tissue. And again, if they become hypoxic and then start an IV with crystalloid fluids is your best bet. Uh, transport the emergency department because that that's where they're going to start giving the antivenom at that point. Do not apply ice or cold or freon sprays. Don't apply an arterial tourniquet. It's not going to help. And do not apply any type of electrical stimulation device to reverse it. It's not going to work. Um, for your coral snake, again, these uh, usually it's muscle paralysis that happens. Be ready to intubate them. Uh, and again, there may be um, no systemic effects for 12 to 24 hours even. But again, once the and again, I will tell you that the way that the the pit vipe the way the pit vipers inject versus a, a coral snake. 
coral snakes, uh, the, the venom comes out of the back of, of the fangs, uh, and it's like more like a hollow teeth in the back. And, and it drips, but the problem is, is that neurotoxin is very much more potent, okay? So again, that's when you get numbness, uh, local numbness, weakness, slurred speech, and again, you can get, start getting paralysis of the tongue larynx and drooping of the eyelids, dilated pupils with that, guys. And again, biggest thing is, is again, wash the site, uh, and you be ready, and again, be ready for the respiratory failure to happen, okay? Uh, immobilize the limb, of course, that's kind of a, a general one. Uh, with that. Um, so uh, again, like I said, uh, uh, coral snake bites, we do not apply ice. We don't apply Freon sprays. Uh, we don't incise the wound. We don't apply any type of electrical stimulation. Take them to the hospital where they can have the proper antivenom put into them. All right. Um, I'm going to hold up here. We'll talk about the Marine guys on the next uh, video, guys, and uh, because we're almost done. That's the good news. But we'll talk about the one on, on these guys on the next one. We'll see you then.